This is section 11.5. We're going to be applying probability using the fundamental counting principle, permutations, and combinations. Let's get started. A club consists of five men and seven women. Three members are selected at random to attend a conference. Find the probability that the selected group consists of part A, three men, and then find the probability of part B, which is one man and two women. So let's take a look at some information derived from the reading. We have five men, seven women. Five plus seven will give us a total of 12 members. All right, then it tells us that three members are selected at random. All right, so if we're gonna choose three at random, being that we're doing this randomly, order does not matter. So we're going to use a combination. Again, we're using a combination because order does not matter. All right, let me rewrite a few little details here. They'll keep us on track. And then we'll look at part A here. So part A is the probability of Selecting three men. So when we look at a probability, recall that a probability is a value between zero and one, and it does include zero and one. So we're looking at mainly a fraction or the numbers zero and one. So a probability will give us a fraction, and up in the numerator, you wanna look at all the possible outcomes of choosing three men from the available men. So we have a total of five men available to choose from. And out of these five, we're going to choose three. So we have five combination three in the numerator. In the denominator, we're going to look at the total count. So we have a total of 12 individuals, all 12 members, and we're choosing three out of those 12 members. So five combination three divided by 12 combination three. All right, and then when you place this in your calculator, you'll get something like 10 divided by 220. And you wanna reduce that to one or 22. This will be the probability of choosing three men to attend a conference. All right, let's look at part B. Part B is the probability of one man and two women. Once again, that probability is going to be a fraction. And let me move right here so we can fit that in. All right, so let's look at the selection of one man. Once again, we're choosing one man out of the available five men to choose from. So five combination one. Then we take a look at two women and the two women we're gonna be selecting from the total seven women that we have available to choose from. So this will be seven combination two. Seven women and we're choosing two of them. In the denominator, we have the total count of members, 12 combination, and once again, we're still choosing three individuals. So you can place this in your calculator all at once and get your final answer. I'm going to do a little bit of work. Five combination one will give you five. Seven combination two will give you 21. You work these individually. 12 combination three, it was 220. And then you reduce, 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 and you should come to 21 over 44. And this will be the probability of selecting one man and two women. Six stand-up comics, A, B, C, D, E, and F, are to perform on a single evening at a comedy club. 
find the probability that comic D will perform last. We'll just do part A first. So what we need to remember is that we have a total of six stand-up comics, all right? So when we're looking at six, we wanna look at all the combinations of uh, those six comedians being able to perform. So we're gonna look at six factorial. Remember this is just six times five, four times three times two times one. And this will give us 720. This 720 is the total possible ways that these comedians can perform. All right, and this is also going to be your denominator when you work this problem out. All right, let's look at part A. So it says, um, find the probability that comic D will perform last. So we're looking for the numerator because we know our denominator is 720. So what I'm gonna do is place um, six little dashes here. One, two, and we want com uh, comic D to perform last. So I'm just gonna put a little D up here to say that's for comedian D to perform. Right, and then I'm just going to fill in my numbers on those dashes. I'm pretending that they're performing on stage one at a time. All right, so if uh, comedian D is going to perform last, there's only one way to choose comic D, and that'll be placing a one right here. So if comic D for certainty is going to perform last, and there's six comics, that leaves me only five people to choose from to perform first. This is my first performer. All right, and then next after that to perform second would be only four people to choose from. And then we just keep decreasing from there, three people to choose from, two available to choose from to perform fourth, and lastly there would be one. You're gonna take each one of these and you're going to multiply them. And we come out with 120. And then once again, we're going to divide this by our denominator, our total count, which is 720. This will reduce to one over six. And this will be the probability if comic D performs last. All right, let's look at the second one there. And again, we're gonna have six comics. And it says comic F will perform third and comic A will perform first. So we're gonna put comic A as first right here and comic F will be, four, um, I'm sorry, will be third. All right, so we ask ourselves, how many ways can we choose comic A? Well, comic A, there's only one individual that's comic A and one individual that's comic A. All right, that's two people, two people out of six. So if we already know where two of the people are placed to perform, what does that leave us for the second performer? How many people are remaining? So six minus two will give me four people remaining to perform on that second position. The fourth performer will only have three people for me to select from, and then it decreases from there. I only have two people to choose from, and then there'll be one person left to choose from to perform last. Once again, we're going to multiply all these together. And in doing so, you should come out to 24 divided by 720 and reduce 100. I'm sorry, one over 30. So once again, I'm, I'm a visual learner, so I like to write the little dashes down and allocate where my performers that I do know is performing, um, just to make sure that I'm doing this okay. Uh, let's grab C. 
And again, we have the communities that will perform in the following order. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And this time we went D, F, A, C, B, E. All right, and there's only one way I can choose comedian D, one way for F, one way to choose comic A, and so forth. So you can see that when I multiply all these together, this is a specific way for them to perform. This is going to give me one over 720. All right, and then for the last one here, let me see if I can fit that in there. All right, so this one says on um, part D, comic B or comic E will perform last. So this is B or comic E. So since we're looking at two different individuals to perform last, it's going to be either one of them. That means we have two options available to choose from. All right, so let's say that we selected one of them to perform. And so that leaves us, the first performer, we have five people to choose from because we chose one to perform last. And then from here, we decrease. Multiply all this together. And we're getting 240 divided by our denominator, 720 and reduces to one third. So the best way for me to go about this is to draw out the little lines that for each performer, place the ones that we do know, such as in the first case there, it wanted performer D last, so I placed performer D first. And after I removed performer D from the options available to me, that left me only five comics to perform. So I started with the first performance with five to choose from, and I decreased from there. A box contains 13 transistors, three of which are defective. If three are selected at random, find the probability that all are defective. All right, so let me write some information once again. So I have 13 transistors. Three are defective. And so that leaves me 10 that are not defective or not defective. Total of 13 transistors. All right, now we're looking for the probability that all are defective. All right, so when we think about them all being defective, what we can do is, I'll write this out um, just in thought process so you can see what I'm thinking. I need to pick three out of three that are defective. And I'm going to pick zero out of the 10 non-defective. All right, so that'll be my numerator. And then in the denominator, I am going to pick three out of 13. And that's the total count of the transistors. So when we work this problem, we're going to have three, combination three, 10, combination zero divided by 13 combination three. And the reason why these are combination is because they're all transistors, order does not matter in this case. 
And when you work this out, you should come out with 1 over 286. So sometimes you might get a quirky answer like this or a fraction that you're not sure. Work that in your calculator twice. Make sure you get the same answer twice. All right, let's look at part B. Let's switch back over here. So now we want the probability of none are defective. All right, so in this case here, let's think about this. Out of those that are defective, which are three of them, we want to choose zero of those. We don't want the defective. But out of the 10 that are non-defective, we want to choose all three of our selections from there. Once again, our denominator will be the same, 13 transistors, choosing three. And that should give you 60 divided by 143. Let's take a look at our next problem. A hand consists of five cards from a well-shuffled deck of 52 cards. So that is our standard deck of cards um, that we reviewed earlier. Find the total number of possible five card poker hands. That's part A. So find the total number of possible five card poker hands. So when you think about this, it just says that it's not specific, it's just five cards. So this would be considered a combination. And our N is 52. Our R is that we're choosing five cards. So this will be 52, combination five. And if you place this in your calculator, you'll get a very large number, 2,598,960. So that would be the answer to just part A. When you take a look at part B now, it says a club flush is a five card hand consisting of all club cards. A club flush is a five card hand consisting of all club cards. Find the number of possible club flushes. So when you think about this one, we know that there are 13, right? There's gonna be 13 clubs. in a deck of cards. All right, so we know that N, we're choosing out of 13 cards there. And it is a five card hand that we're going to pick. Again, let me underline that so you can see it's a five card hand. So my R is five. So the possible club flushes that you could get would be 13, combination five, another combination. And you should get 1,287 possible club flushes. All right, and then part C, it says find the probability of being dealt a club flush. So what happens is that in part A and part B, we found the information that we need in order to find part C. So to get a club flush, you need to find out how many possible club flushes there are. All right, so that is going to be, if you wanna see it this way, 1,287, that was our answer in part B, divided by the total number of possible five card poker hands, which is the 
All right, and if you place that in your calculator, it will reduce. And it gives you 33 divided by 66,640. So the way you should look at this problem, it's actually a, a nice problem to, to look at, is that what if you didn't have part A and B? And it just says, a hand consists of five cards from a well-shoveled deck of 52 cards. Find the probability of being dealt a club flush. All right, and that would be a typical problem. So the idea is that if you have to look for a club flush, the first thing you want to find is how many club flushes are available. That'll be your numerator. And then how many total? You can go in either order, but you need to find the numerator. You need to find your denominator, then place them together. Okay, and our next problem is another card problem. It says, if you are dealt three cards from a shuffled deck of 52 cards, find the probability of getting one queen and two kings. All right, so this is what we're looking for. We're looking for the probability of one queen and two kings. Once again, I'll write down what my thought process is. I need to pick one queen out of four queens that are in the deck of cards times, and then I need to pick two kings out of the four kings that are in the deck of cards, all divided by, so I'm picking one queen and two kings, that's a total of three cards. So I'm going to pick three cards out of a total of 52 cards. All right, so what this would look like as our combination must once again, order does not matter. This will be my queens. I have four queens to choose from. I'm choosing one times. I have four kings to choose from combination. I'm just choosing two kings there. And then in the denominator, I have 52 cards. I'm choosing three. All right, now let's read a little carefully. It says in the instructions, it says round to six decimal places as needed. So if you get a crazy decimal in your calculator, we need to make sure that we write everything down. So I'm gonna put my tildes here. So I'm, pro I'm approximating since we're rounding. And my calculator looks like it's giving me zero, zero, one, zero, eight, five, nine, and it goes on a little more than that, but I'm just going to count out my place values now because it wants it to six decimal places. So that would be where this five is at, the sixth number after the decimal. I look to the right to see if I need to round. Nine is greater than five, so that means I will add a one right here, and that would give me Decimal zero zero one zero eight six. So I did need to round. All right. And this is the answer that I would place into my math lab right here. For this last slide, I'm just going to go over a little bit of information about the calculator. And for this class, we're using the Casio 115ES Plus. So if we're looking for the factorial, the one with the exclamation point on there, what you would do is you type in your number first. Then you'll hit the shift button, and then you'll press the X and the 
negative 1, and then pressure equal to execute. All right, for permutations, you'll type in your end value first. Press the shift button. Next, press the multiplication button. Type in your R value. And then your equal sign. And then lastly, for the combination, type in your n value, press the shift key, and then we're going to press the division key, type in your r value, press equal to execute. 